Welcome to the Julie Lawton Living Podcast, the place to get advice, tips, and tricks to building the life and luxury home of your dreams with 30-year business owner, designer, and builder, Julie Lawton. It all starts with a good plan. This is Julie Lawton Living. Welcome back to another episode of Julie Lawton Podcast, and today we're going to talk about my all-time favorite topic, I guess you could call it. Um, This is where my career started in California, if you don't know, but we're going to talk about the ultimate custom kitchen. What does that mean? And before we get started, check out my seven simple steps, share it with your friends, tell people you know how this process works because you saw Julie's seven simple steps and that makes you an expert. So check it out. Anyway, um, here we go. Custom kitchens, the ultimate custom kitchen. I don't know if anybody you know this. It still amazes me today that people don't know some things about me because I advertise so much. But <laughs> I, um, I am, I am, I do the architecture. I went to college for architecture, landscape architecture, and interior design. And when I moved to California, after doing fabulous commercial design in New York City and every single model home in New York City built between eighty-five and ninety, for Milstein, Goodstein, Lefrak, etc. It's all on my website. I focused on custom kitchens because I have been drafting since I was 14 years old, drawing, designing. I like to design things. I'm not some fluff head that just picks out shit. Anyway, I swore. I wasn't going to swear. Anyway, I um, I like to design. That's my thing. I'm technical. So what happened when I moved to New York, moved from New York to California, I had to start over. And I got a job in a kitchen showroom that, thank God, specialized in custom wood cabinets, kind of a small bone style from England. And the, the cabinet maker did not speak English. It was fascinating to me. And um, he was German and he built the be- most fabulous custom cabinets in the world. And he actually built the doors. Now, nobody does that anymore. You can do that. But most people don't do that level of custom. So everything's solid wood. The doors are custom. They're hand carved. They're hand hewn. I mean, it was a beautiful thing. And those cabinets I'm talking about are in the Wallace Neff home I designed in Pasadena on my website. They're a solid cherry wood. And it's a Wallace Neff home that was featured in the movie Monster in Law. So check it out on my website. But that was my ultimate custom kitchen because everything in that kitchen was hand done by one man and his helper. It was fabulous, fabulous. And the hardware was vintage. I even had a a hardware store in South Pasadena that made my hardware for some of the cabinets we did in other rooms, but the whole house was custom wood, custom cabinets, custom paneling. It was just over the, off the chain, over the top and all the good woods like cherry wood and mahogany, the kitchen and the dining room were cherry wood. I mean, who does that anymore? Solid cherry wood and the mahogany bar and the mahogany ceiling it just was fabulous. But the point of custom kitchens, truly custom, is they actually contain the compartments and they're designed to hold all your stuff exactly to the quarter of an inch. I also did another one on um, in New- in Corona del Mar that was a, a similar style, but in lighter colors. And I really enjoyed that because we did truly custom, like the client took out every piece of uh, cut dishes, bowls, everything she had to store in that kitchen. We measured it. Like that's how, you know, every shelf, every drawer, cutlery, storage containers, cooking items, pots, pans, everything was customized to fit. And the entire interior of the cabinets was walnut. So when you pulled the drawers open, it was walnut, like the dashboard of a Rolls Royce. I mean, there's nothing more fabulous than that. When you pull open the drawer and it's walnut, I mean, over the top. I could go on and on and design custom kitchens and closets if clients could just afford it. Just kidding. But the point is, you want when you truly do a custom kitchen, it's not ridiculously expensive, but it's more than, hey, ordering some stock crap online or from Home Depot. So the point is... Custom kitchens to me is like having a a fancy car, a Rolls Royce or a Bentley. There is a level of, oh my God, it just opened it and just seeing the walnut or feeling, feeling and seeing the cherry wood or the mahogany. I mean, it's, that's custom kitchens, you know, just like a, your uh, elite 
um, designing a car, you know, like Jaguar, you know, the Jaguar that they're, I know they're, they've designed the, um, the vintage Jaguars. They put some back on the market, the craftsmanship in a, in a custom kitchen and a custom cabinet and a custom closet. It's beautiful thing to have in your home. If you're into that. And, um, but if you're into that, you're probably into other custom things. Like I said, custom jewelry, custom cars. It's a whole level of excellence that I pride myself in doing spectacularly to historical detail to the ultimate in quality. And I can just go on and on, but that's my niche. I, you know, I did it at Tony Baxter's house since Tudor. I brought in hand carvers from Ireland and uh, we did English Tudor and, um, hand carved in everything to match photographs and sketches. I mean, that's custom and there's nothing better. The Wallace Neff home I designed, which is in the movie Monster in Law. The cool thing about that is I was the first one to touch the kitchen and the client bought the home and the, and it was existing features, the existing entryway with the black and white marble and the hand rail, the wrought iron stairwell, and the stone stairs, all that was original architecture and finishes. And so we didn't have to do much to the home in general, other than get it furnished. And the, but the kitchen was the original kitchen, like the cook's kitchen. So everything was closed off. There was no open dining room and there was no open kitchen. So we gutted the old kitchen, which was behind doors. And then we opened up the two areas at the end of it and made it an office with a door to the outside and a pantry, but the entire kitchen got a bigger window and the end of the kitchen, the other end of the kitchen was open with beautiful pocket doors to a dining room. And that wall was all custom cabinets, both, both sides to get to the dining room. And then, then the dining room was opened up to the family room, which had the mahogany bar. And that wall was opened up as far as we could open up. So there was a straight shot from the dining room to the foyer that I was talking about, the black and white one to the left as you enter. But it, what happened is that the whole L-shaped kitchen, dining, and family room was opened up and it all and was all clad in wood, cherry wood and mahogany wood. And, um, and a fireplace was added to the family room and coffered ceilings. It was just over the top. And it's on my website. You can see it. But um, taking the function of the old 1928 kitchen and turning it into the new function for today was the funnest part because now it's open and, but it's still historical and time period correct, but it's, it functions now better. So when you design your new kitchen, you should work with a professional and make sure you start with a mood board. So you know what it looks like style wise, and then work with a professional that knows how to do space planning, make sure it functions for you and you can get all your stuff in there. So kitchen design is a very important, important. It's customized to fit your needs. So make sure you understand the space, see the mood board, see the 3d rendering, make sure all your stuff fix, fits and enjoy your new kitchen. And, and for any, and for more tips, check out my website, and my seven simple steps. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Julie Lawton Living. For more information or to connect with Julie one-on-one, -on -one, visit julielawtonliving.com. And don't forget, it all starts with a good plan.